for a while it seemed like Dead Island 2 may never see the light of day. I won't rehash the details of its troubled development, but I do think it's fitting that Dan Buster Studios are the ones to get it to the finish line, given that they have a similar backstory going all the way back to Free Radical Design. And they seem uniquely qualified, since one of their only other releases to date is Homefront The Revolution, another sequel to a game they didn't originally make. So how is Dead Island 2 on PC? Will you be facing off with stutter struggle more than the hordes of undead? Are optimized settings even possible? Well, before we dive into all that, let's get a few things out of the way. First, I only managed to complete just over half the campaign for this review, but I did play for more than a dozen hours. This review is of single-player content only, and if you want to see the game in all its gory glory, you'll have to check out Tom's overview of the console versions, because this one will be squeaky clean. Now let's get on with it. Anyone who plays games on PC knows how bad things have been lately. Sometimes just getting into a game can be a real test of patience. Unfortunately, one of this title's biggest downsides rears its ugly head before you even launch it. The fact that it's currently an Epic Game Store exclusive. If you can get past that, there are a few things Dead Island 2 does well right out of the gate, though. When you first launch it, you'll be greeted with logo screens, but luckily, most can be bypassed with a press of the Enter key. Don't mash it too quickly though, because the game actually compiles shaders right at the start, and it's incredibly easy to accidentally skip the process, which you do not want to do. Thankfully, the shader compilation process only lasts a few seconds, even on older machines. Whether or not it works though, we'll get to shortly. The rest of what you'll see is pretty straightforward, like support for arbitrary resolutions, borderless full screen, and FOV adjustment, just to name a few. Once in-game, you'll be presented with a video that plays at 30 frames per second, but don't worry, practically all of the game's cinematics beyond this point are rendered in real time. After that, you'll be dropped into an intro sequence that's not really indicative of the rest of the game, but does have its uses as a bit of a benchmark. For example, I used it to test out ultra-wide support due to its in-engine cutscenes, and things went about as you'd expect. The most important thing, the gameplay, worked properly, but those cutscenes were all in 16x9 with some pretty jarring changes to aspect ratio, so just be aware of that. After this intro scene, you'll finally see daylight, and it's here where you can finally get a proper feel for the actual game. As Tom touched on in his video, Dead Island 2's open world is broken up into several zones, and traveling between them requires a loading screen. I'm happy to report though that those loading screens are nice and quick, with results that line up with current gen consoles. Graphically, Dead Island 2 isn't really doing anything ambitious, and its cross gen roots definitely shine through. It's still aesthetically pleasing, mind you, character models look nice and animate well, and the game makes great use of indirect lighting, but it's not doing anything we haven't seen before. From an image quality standpoint, things can be a little soft at times, even at native 4K. This is mostly due to the limited number of sensible AA options on offer. You can choose between TAA and FSR2, but that's about it. No DLSS or XESS on tap here. The TAA can be a bit blurry when set to high, but I prefer that to low because it does a nice job at keeping things stable, even in areas with lots of fine detail. FSR, on the other hand, can actually add detail to objects like roof tiles and concrete floors, but when it comes to stability, it could be better. Things like leaves, fences, or gratings have tons of shimmering, which can be incredibly distracting, so in the end I just stuck with TAA. VRS is also an option, but I didn't care for how much it degraded the quality in certain scenes, so I kept it off, but your mileage may vary. On a positive note though, all the settings can be toggled from low to ultra without having to restart the game, but it would have been nice to have at least some sort of preview thumbnail or something to give some indication of how each one affects the image. I also want to point out some baffling design decisions, particularly regarding reflections. There's a reason that games don't usually have a ton of mirrors, and if they do, they're usually either covered or shattered. For some reason, Dead Island 2 has mirrors all over the place early on, but you won't see anything staring back at you, except the low-res cube map that awkwardly warps as you pass by. Not only that, but bizarrely, the game's screen space reflections often aren't even applied to many of the game's reflective surfaces, and when they are, they transition awkwardly on and off the screen. Needless to say, these tend to look really out of place. 
There's also times where you'll see weird issues like your hands just floating in midair. I did notice these issues on PS5 as well though, so here's hoping they are addressed in some capacity in the future. Moving on to performance then, seeing as how current gen consoles run at 60 FPS, I thought it reasonable to expect the same on both higher end and mid range PCs. To test this, I decided to use the game's intro sequence as a benchmark due to its mix of things like explosions, particles, volumetric lighting, and real time cutscenes. First, I tried a higher end PC equipped with a 3080 Ti and 13700K. Maxing things out at 4K saw the game stay above 60 FPS for pretty much the entire run. The best part, little to no shader compilation stutter. Next I tried a mid-range PC equipped with an RTX 2080 and a 3900X set to use just 6 cores. As you can see, this run was practically unplayable, so I tried again with the same settings but FSR set to quality. This time performance improved a bit, but it was still well below the 60fps threshold. Time to fire up the PS5 version and track down some optimized settings. Getting a close match to the consoles is fairly simple. After testing the PC settings one by one, I learned that by far the two that hit the frame rate the hardest are shadows and effects. Turning down just these two settings from ultra to medium gets you very close to the PS5 visually and a significant performance boost. Running through the intro again on the mid-range PC at 4K with FSR quality and optimized settings, finally got it above 60fps. From there I wanted to make sure things were stable, so I loaded up the save in the open world and started running around. That's when I encountered a strange issue. You see, things would start out smoothly enough, but every now and then the frame rate would nosedive to the mid 40s and just sit there. Sometimes it would bounce back to the 60s, other times I would need to restart the game completely. Now keep in mind this only ever happened on my mid-range PC at 4K with FSR set to quality, and it still happened even when I tried setting everything else to low. I then tried the game at native 1440p instead, and got a much more consistent experience, especially with optimized settings where I saw frame rates all the way up over 100 at times. I've now spent a number of hours using these settings, and I've had a pretty solid experience overall, especially with VRR. But if you don't have a VRR capable display, I would definitely recommend using something like RTSS to cap the frame rate to 60 because the in-game cap doesn't work well and will leave you with some pretty bad frame pacing. In the end then, my optimized settings are really rather simple and look like this. And finally, for anyone wondering about traversal stutter, I've only seen a few instances of any stutter at all on either PC, and they were always just small hitches here and there, nothing that lasted for a prolonged period, so at least in my experience, it's thankfully kept to a minimum. Overall, Dead Island 2 on PC definitely has some weird quirks, its reflections are ugly, FSR could be better, and it could really benefit from more AA options, but on the whole, it runs pretty well, which is a lot more than I can say for many other ports released in the last couple of years especially those using Unreal Engine 4. Here's hoping other developers take notice and start doing the same. But uh, yeah, I'm not holding my breath. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and don't forget to ring the bell to receive instant notifications whenever a new one drops. For a pristine version of this and every video we make, check out the Digital Foundry Patreon at patreon.com. And if you'd like to get in touch directly, just use Twitter. Till next time.